Hey there, this is Dave Ward from Claptrap Studios. What we'll be looking at in this tutorial is creating a 2D skeletal character setup so that you can move legs, arms, body independently of each other and how to animate that and then how to move between these animations that we create. So I've just got a button here and if you click jump, he's going to do his jump animation but then move back to his regular one. Okay, so let's set him up. So in an empty scene, uh, I've just got a character sprite sheet, which has got all the individual components of this character inside it. Um, I'll create an empty game object and call it character. That's going to be the root of our character object. Inside that, I'll create this head and body. As when you move the character around, you want its head and its body to move around, but also you can move its head and its body separately. Inside the body, you're going to want a left leg, right leg, left arm and right arm. That's so that if you move the body around, it's going to move all the arms and legs components around at the same time, as that's what you'd logically expect. Inside the head, um, I'm going to create a face object and it's got a little bit of hair. So if you were to move the head object around, it'd move his face and his hair around as they're attached to the head. Okay, so for each of these components, you need to add a sprite renderer and you need to uh, attach the relevant um, sprite to it. I'll fast forward doing the rest. So after we've added a sprite renderer and the corresponding sprite to each one of these game objects, they're all rendered at the same x and y position at the moment, which is just zero. Um, and they've all got the same ordering layer of zero. So they're all trying to render at, um, at zero, more or less. Um, so what we really want is for the legs to be drawn at the back. So they're going to stay zero. Um, just in front of that, you want the body to be drawn. So move that to one. Left and right arm just in front of the body at two. The head at three, in front of the body, and then the face and the hair at four. And then just move each of these components into the position you want. And again, I'll fast forward through this. Okay, so now what we've got is a character where you can move his head and his body independently. You can move his um, face independent to his head um, and his, his arms and legs independent to his body. So. You can move, move his head like so, doesn't affect um, other parts of this character. Move his body, which will take the arms and his legs with it. Or you can just move um, a leg independently. Which is pretty cool. So now we've got our setup, it'll be a good time to start animating. And there's one extra thing I'm going to do before we uh, start the animation. I'm going to create uh, another empty game object and I'm going to call this the character container and place the character inside the character container. And so what this means is we're going to get all our animations to affect um, this character, but we can still move the character around on screen independent of these animations using the character container. So let's start animating. We'll um, create an animator and an animation clip, we'll call it character walk. And inside this, uh, I'll just quickly uh, animate his legs. You can do a, a much more complex animation if you want. Um, but as you can see, it's just moving um, any component you want, any game object you want individually of each other. And when you play it, It'll play like the animation, like that on his legs. Um, I'll just do his left and his right leg to make it look a little bit like he's walking. So we can see the difference between this one and the next animation we create. There we go. So that's his legs moving. So I've created a, a character walk animation. Um, which creates this animator component. And the animator is it's like a, a state machine. 
inside our character. So at the minute we've just got one state called character walk. We're going to create another animation state called character jump. And then we're going to move between them based on this uh, button click that we're going to create. So we'll create character jump. And I'll just fast forward over creating this animation. So now we have this basic jump animation and uh, a walk animation. And we'll look at how to switch between the two. In our animator, our state machine, we've got um, as a default, which is this uh, orange color into it, character walk, and then this character jump. So the way that we're gonna move between these two states is to make a transition from one to the other, and it'll create this arrow. You then click the second um, animation state. And we're gonna create a parameter should be a trigger. So when this trigger is set, which we'll, we'll call jump, when jump is set, it's going to move from character walk to character jump. That's what this condition we'll just set up here is. And we don't require um, there to be a specific time in the character walk animation to go to character jump. It can be at any point in the walk cycle um, we can jump. So we'll untick that as a specific exit time. And we'll also create another transition from jump to walk. So after jump has completed, at a specific exit time, which is going to be at one. So when the jump um, animation is completed, we don't want any transition time. We're going to go straight back to walking. So we're going to be walking. We're going to click jump. It's going to move to this character jump state, jump. And when that jump's finished, we're going to carry on walking again and looping over that. Okay. So uh, we'll create a simple script on the character container. We'll call it um, just character. And inside that script, we'll just have one uh, public method, which we can access from, the, from our button, um, call it jump. We'll grab the animator and set that trigger on it, which we call jump. Okay. Then finally, we'll create our UI so that we have that input from the button. Um, we'll call that button jump. And we'll say that when that button is clicked, we're going to grab the character script on that object we've just supplied it and call jump on it. <clears throat> if we take that for a spin, see that our character is in his default character walk state with his legs running around. When we click jump, he's going to call his jump animation. You can see that happening if you open the animator window as well. Looping through walk, click jump, and our character jumps. So that, in a nutshell, is the basics of creating a skeletal 2D character, um, animating it, and moving between those animations with a trigger.